What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. This episode of GH was a trip. <laughs> it was crazy. But first of all, I'm actually surprised slash not surprised that Jax is, you know, not feeling Hayden's plan to just use Nina's weakness right now to get information and to search Windermere and stuff. I mean, Jax does have his limitations. Is Jax perfect? No, but he has his limits, though, because her daughter is severely sick and people think it's just the flu. I'm like, no, it's a little bit more than the flu. They don't really know what kind of flu she has or if it's contagious or, you know, whatever. They don't know what they're dealing with. And Jax, you know, he sympathizes with Nina because of what happened with Jocelyn all those years ago and the cancer and stuff like that. So he's not going to use her child to get leverage on Valentine. That's not what he's going to do. And I'm actually happy he decided not to. I mean, Jax's biggest concern right now is the next softball game because the next game is going to be Corinthos Coffee versus Aurora Media. And he's more worried about that because he definitely don't want to lose to Sonny. <laughs> That's his main concern right now. And Hayden's main concern is getting whatever information that they're looking for at Windermere. So she decides to take herself to Windermere. And... She was taking a little bit too long to get that office door unlocked. I, I had a feeling she was going to get caught. <laughs> I knew it. I knew she was going to get caught. I knew it. And she finally gets the door open. And what irritated me with Hayden was she left the door open. I said, why didn't you close the door? She should have closed the door and locked it back. Because I knew once she left that door open, I knew she was going to get caught. I said, Hayden, close the door. <laughs> Like, you know, that's how you found it. You found the door closed and locked. Why didn't you close and lock the door behind you? I said, come on now, Hayden, you smarter than this. Um, I am surprised that Valentine kept Helena's portrait up. You remember after she died and they did the will reading and stuff like that. And that portrait that she left for Nicholas of her sipping, um, sitting there sipping tea. I'm surprised Valentine kept that, that portrait up because everybody know he didn't really care for Helena. So I'm surprised that he kept it. I'm like, why would you want to keep a portrait up of somebody that you hated? I guess. I thought it was maybe a safe behind that portrait or something. I really want to know, like, what is it that Hayden is looking for? Because she was looking all through that office. I'm like, what is she searching for? That's the question. Um, And of course, she got caught by Obrecht. Um, but Obrecht is the type of person she's an opportunist so the good thing is she got caught by Obrecht because we all know Obrecht ain't gonna tell nothing unless it benefits her and so basically Hayden has to promise her something significant to make sure that Obrecht keeps her mouth closed and helps her get dirt on Valentine. because Obrecht basically told her she said your options are you could tell me what you're looking for and I may help you find it or you could not tell me what you're looking for and I could just snitch on you to Valentine. <laughs> That's basically her option. <laughs> That's why I love me some Obrecht. I love Obrecht. As crazy as she is, she's also funny, but she's also an opportunist. I love it. Like she doesn't do nothing if it don't benefit her. Um. So anyway, everybody's at this softball game. It's Aurora Media versus the Invader. Um, Lulu decided to come to the game, but she wasn't playing on playing. She just wanted to sit on the sidelines, be a cheerleader. I'm mad, though, because I love this. Seeing them all playing softball and stuff like that. I mean, on the other side of town, you got people transferring other people's memories. And then on the other side of town, you got people playing softball. Like, this is fun. <laughs> it's interesting. Um... I wish that we could see them physically play because remember the last game we saw, well, we kind of saw getting ready for was the PCPD versus ELQ. Um, I just wish that um, we could see them physically play. I would like to see them, you know, hitting the ball and running and, you know, we just get to see the before and after. That's all we get to see. 
And I'm like, why waste the outside set, though? Because they got it all set up and stuff for softball. I was like, Dag, I really want to see at least a few minutes of them playing. We ain't got to see the whole game, just a couple minutes. But um, it's, it's always fun for me to see people get all dressed up, whether they're at a party or even a softball game. I love to see them together having fun. You know, it gives you a break from the drama that's going on. Um, so, of course, Obrecht was mad because Lulu didn't want to play, so they were going to be down a person. Obrecht is crazy. She told, she told Peter, she said, first of all, you're the boss. Make her play. <laughs> I love Obrecht. She was not playing. She's sitting there talking about she wanted to strut her stuff. Obrecht, don't nobody want to see nothing you got to strut. <laughs> I said, stop it. <laughs> Obrecht, I love her. She is pure comedy. Because she could turn on that evil in a minute, but then she could be funny in a second, too. I love it. How she switches. It's super fun. Um... So, since Hayden is not playing in the game, she got Dustin to take her place. You know Dustin, the one that Lulu went on them dates with. He used to play uh, Brody Jenner on One Life to Live. Um, I told y'all he was going to be back. Um, fans, from what I've heard, fans seem to be taken to him. I like it because I feel like Lulu has chemistry with Dustin. I really do. I didn't want to see her move on from Dante too fast, but I really do like the chemistry between them. And Peter and Maxi was like, that is not fair. They was like, first of all, even though Obrecht and Alden was not here for it, for Dustin being on Team Aurora, because he ain't even no employee. You have to be an employee of the company in order to play in the, the softball game. But Jax officially hired him temporarily, I guess, as a driver for Aurora Media. <laughs> so now he's officially technically temporarily an employee. So now he's officially a part of the game. Um, and that's what basically made Lulu want to play. Lulu was like, okay, I'll play. Um, because they basically had like a little side bet of their own. The loser has to buy the drinks. Um, so of course, Team Aurora beat the invader. Honestly, I'm not surprised that Aurora Media beat the invader. I'm not shocked. But Ulbrecht was not here to play. Listen, Obrecht was sitting there just ogling at Jax the whole time. Jax knew good and well she was flirting because that woman was flirting with him. The way she was giving him them bedroom eyes and stuff. And it was so funny because Jax was asking Peter, he said, you think Obrecht was flirting with me? A blind man can see that Obrecht was flirting with you, Jax. Obrecht wanted some of that good. She wanted some good good. That's what she wanted. I don't know why Jax playing games. He might as well go ahead and get that. But it would be a little awkward seeing as how he does like Nina and stuff like that. But um, he better go hit that. The older the berry, the sweeter the juice. You better go ahead. <laughs> Obrecht was not playing. She told Maxie straight up she had to go home and change because she got to get herself all, you know, beautified and all that stuff. Because she was like, she can't be looking no mess for Jack. She got to look good. I love me some Obrecht. Um... But yeah, Dustin and Lulu were having a good time at the bar, you know, getting beer and stuff like that, talking. And Maxie was being so nosy, <laughs> sitting there all staring at them, talking and stuff like that. She was like watching them like a hawk. Like Maxie was not playing. I loved it, though. But yeah, I, I just wish that we could see the actual game, though. That's what I'm missing. I was like, dang, man, I wish I could see them actually play against each other. Um... But I enjoyed it, though. I enjoyed those scenes of them getting ready for the game and, you know, trash talking and stuff like people do before the game. I love scenes like this. It's like a feel good scene. You know what I mean? Like because it gives you a break from the drama that's going on surrounding, you know, the surrounding storyline. So you get a little break from it. Um. So anyway, Lucas, you know, had a little chat with Julian and Kim and stuff and found out that Julian was moving. Why do everybody keep? thinking that Julian, they keep talking like Julian is moving out of the country. He's moving to the city. It's not far. You know what I mean? Like y'all all already live in New York. You just live in another town. You know what I mean? He's moving to Manhattan to the city. It's a drive away. Why do they keep between Lucas and Ava? They keep acting like he moving to another country. Lucas talking about, oh, I got so much I want to tell you. First of all, he's not moving to another country. He's not dying. He talking about, oh, I got so much I want to say to you and tell you. He made it sound like Julian was about to die. I'm like, bruh, you can pick up the phone and call him. You can get in a car and take a road trip real quick. And it's not even a road trip. It's not that far of a drive. Y'all all still live in New York. 
He's just living on another part of New York. That's all it is. They make it seem like he either on his deathbed or he moving to another country. I'm like, chill out. He's a drive away. He ain't going far. <laughs> like, yeah, like that's just the way he was talking. Like, oh, I'm just so used to having you around every day. I got so much to tell you. You can tell him. He ain't leaving just yet. And I don't believe, I, I agree with the psychic though. Even before the psychic said anything, I already knew Julian wasn't going nowhere. Julian ain't leaving nowhere. I don't care what him and Kim talking about. They not going nowhere no time soon. Um, I could possibly see Kim leaving, but I still kind of don't want to see her leave. Because I still feel like that character has potential if done right. I still feel like they like she does. Um, but now with this whole Drew 2.0 business, Kim definitely might be sticking around now. Um, for the, you know, for a while at least. But, um, she made it seem like to Lucas that she was going to leave whether Julian was leaving with her or, you know, she was going to leave with him or without him. Um, I could see her doing that. But my thing is, I had to agree with what Ava said the other day. It doesn't matter where Kim goes. She's going to grieve for Oscar for a very long time. That was her firstborn child. That's her only child. She's going to grieve that boy no matter where she goes. She can move to Puerto Rico right now. It's not going to change anything. Her feelings are not going to change. A change of scenery might be good for the moment, but it's not going to take that pain away from her. You know what I mean? Like, she's still going to think about Oscar. She's still going to grieve about Oscar. At least living in Port Charles, she can visit some of the places that Oscar loved to be, like the bridge. You can go to Oscar's Meadow in the park. You know, you can visit those places. That way you can always be closer to him, even though he's always going to be in her heart, but you can still be closer to him. Um, I can understand a change, of, a change of scenery, but why not just take a little vacation or something, you know, to clear your head a little bit. Then come back focused. You know what I mean? Because no matter where you go, Oscar is always going to be on the brain. Can't escape that. Um, but anyway, moving on from that. And I definitely, well, actually, I definitely think Lucas is probably going to need Julian a little bit more once this truth about the baby comes out. But then again, when Julian's part in it comes out, he might not. I think he probably will be more. He's going to be upset with Julian for not telling him. But I, I have a feeling he's going to be way more angry at, at Brad, of course. I cannot wait to see that divorce happen. I'm, I'm chomping at the bit. I cannot wait for... Lucas to find out the truth and he filed in papers and I hope he beats Brad down. I hope Michael beat Brad down. I just can't wait. I can't wait. The writers got to stop playing with me. We we got to get this show on the road like right now. I'm ready. I'm ready for the truth to come out about this. I, I really am. I'm ready for Brad to just I'm just ready for Lucas to exterminate Brad at this point like the rodent that he is. <laughs> like I'm just ready. Um. Actually, congratulations to Perry Shin, who plays Brad Cooper. Um, he just celebrated recently his 200th episode of GH, so congrats to him. That's major, though, to be on a show, 200 episodes, even though he's recurring, but that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. It was good to see Jason and Sam dressed up in something different than their normal wares. Um <laughs> Because they're in the softball game, too. They, you know, Corinthos Coffee. Um, and, of course, Milo and all them were playing and stuff like that. But it was cool to see them all dressed up in a uniform and stuff. Um, basically, their scenes was just basically consisting of Robert updating them on Shiloh being arrested and what happened with Cameron and Franco and basically what's going to happen next. Sam looked like she was over it when she heard that Franco got Drew's memory. She rolled her eyes <laughs> Because she know what that entails. She already know the drama that's about to come with that. She already know. Like, she just got to mentally prepare herself. Because she know once she see Franco and he start thinking he drew. Well, obviously, he probably not going to know who Sam is, clearly. Um, but, because, you know, Drew 2.0 is stuck in 2012 right now. It's going to be a hot mess. I can't wait to see Jason and Sam interact with him. That's going to be hilarious. Especially when he see that Jason has his old face. <laughs> That's going to be hilarious.
Let me tell you something. Roger Howarth is killing this right now, which I knew he would. I knew it. Even though I wasn't here for this at first, I knew I had to give it some time. I said, you know what? Let me see what they do with it from the beginning. And I'm liking it so far. It's hilarious. It's sad, but it's hilarious at the same time. And Roger is just killing it with the facial expressions, with like the way he was looking at Kim. <laughs> Yo, he was looking at her like she was a straight up sex on a platter. That's how he was looking at her. Like he looked like he didn't care who else was around. He was about to get busy with her right there on that floor in the middle of the hospital. That's the way he was looking at her. Like like a dog on a bone. I felt super bad for Liz though. Like she just kept trying to convince him that he was Franco. She was showing him pictures on his phone of him and her at the reception last month. Showing him pictures of him and Lisa and him and Scott, him and the boys and showing him his driver's license, his hospital ID badge. He just was not having it. He didn't believe nothing. She said, even with the proof in his face, he didn't care. Um, he just was not trying to believe her. And then on top of that, he just kept calling her ma'am. <laughs> That's what kills me about this. Like six months of marriage, what, two years of being together and he keeps and now he's calling her ma'am. I said, I feel bad for her all over again. <laughs> like, to have your husband of six months call you ma'am? <laughs> like, I felt bad for her. Like, for real, like, I really did. I felt bad for her. I said, damn. That got to, like, that just gives you a lump in your throat. To be married to somebody and they don't remember you and they calling you ma'am. And that's like if a wife did it. She'd be calling him sir. <laughs> like, it's just sad. I said, damn, like. I know for I know Drew was Drew 1.0 was standing there like I know it was awkward for him to be standing there. I know he felt bad. <laughs> so they left him alone for a few minutes and he was like, you know what, I gotta get out of here. He started getting dressed. He was telling Liz, Oh, you can't stop me from leaving. I said, Well, legally she technically can't. Even though you run around claiming to be Drew, all your driver's license and everything says Franco. So Legally, she could probably have you committed if she wanted to. She can. As his wife, she has that authority. If she feel like he acting out, she could do that. She could put you on a psychiatric hold. <laughs> she definitely can <laughs> if she wanted to. But I'm actually glad at that moment that Drew stopped her from doing it. You know, just give him some space because obviously he thinks he's Drew. So who better to tell her about himself than the actual Drew Kane? And he told her, he was like, he's not leaving poor Charles. He could hear it in his voice. He's going to stay. Now that he's seen Kim, he really going to stay. Um, I'm surprised that they're not calling it, uh, Andre Maddox yet. You know, maybe Andre could fix this. I mean, who knows? He might might be able to reverse it maybe somehow if they contact him. This would be great to get Andre in on this right now. It would be amazing. Um, when he saw... Kim. Kim thought that obviously Kim has no clue what's going on. She has no idea. And when she was telling him that she was leaving poor Charles, he was like, oh, well, we could leave together. She was looking at him like, er? like <laughs> she was looking at him like, OK, what is he talking about? And he was sitting there looking at her hair and stuff, touching on her hair. He was like, oh, you did something different with your hair. She was like, yeah. She was like, I just got out. She was like, she took a shower or something and wet it or something. Um, like, he was just all touchy-feely and stuff. And she's just looking at him like real awkward looking. Like, <laughs> and he said they're smirking with this little devilish look on his face and stuff. Like, you know, look like just looking at her like a bitch in heat. That's how he was looking at her. Like, he in heat. I was like, are you serious? And I was not expecting that to happen. But when he kissed her, my mouth just opened. Why? I said, what? And I had a feeling. I knew Elizabeth and Drew was going to walk up and see it. I felt crazy bad for Liz. Like, even though she know he's not himself, I know it had to hurt her heart to see her husband kissing on another woman. And Kim didn't look like she was fighting that kiss. I'm just Kim didn't look like she might have been surprised. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, but she was not pushing. She wasn't nothing. She she was all still. I was like, OK, you got a married man kissing on you and you ain't pushing. <laughs> I said, OK, Kim, I guess you must have liked it then. She must have kissed the Franco and liked it. <laughs> I was like, wow, 
because she was actually stunned because he was bringing up stuff from Drew's past with accuracy. That's what she was so surprised about. She was like, because she was just shocked. She was like, how could he possibly know about all this information about her and Drew? And then when he kissed her, I'm pretty sure she was stunned. Like, who wouldn't be? And I know, you know, under any other circumstances, I know Liz would have, you know, ran over there and pulled some hair. But <laughs> I'm glad Liz just stood there and, you know, didn't do nothing because she know he's not in his right frame of mind. But uh, this storyline is definitely getting interesting by the second. Like, it is getting crazy. And Drew 2.0, basically, when Drew 1.0 mentioned Shiloh... Um, Drew 2.0 was like, that's why he needed to talk to his superiors, because he knows about what Shiloh did, obviously, in Afghanistan. He know. So I think those that's obviously those memories are the key to really shutting Shiloh up. It really is. But this storyline so far is it's getting interesting. It's getting even more interesting now. And I'm actually enjoying this because Roger Howard is just killing it. Billy Miller's killing it. Becky Hurst is killing it. They're just doing it. You know what I mean? Like they're taking this material that some people might think is ridiculous and they're making gold out of it. And I'm enjoying it. I know some people probably not. That's fine. You know, if it's not your cup of tea, that's great. But for me, I'm right now I'm enjoying it from what I'm seeing. And the actors are making me enjoy it even more because of what they're bringing to it. But um, anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see you all later. I hope you have an amazing day. See you all later. Peace.